everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mello. And let's get into this movie reaction. Like, damn, man, that person right there is a little bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> Golly, kept trying to scoot it over and over, get in that perfect spot. Head ass. <laughs> My grandfather was a lawman. Father, too. Me and him were sheriffs at the same time, him up in Plano and me out here. I think he's pretty proud of that. I know I was. You can't help but compare yourself against the old timers. Can't help but wonder how they'd have operated these times. There's this boy I sent to the electric chair at Huntsville here a while back. He killed a 14 year old girl. Papers said it was a crime of passion, but he told me there wasn't any passion to it. Damn. Yeah, that boy right there is sick in the mind. I always knew you had to be willing to die to even do this job. I don't want to push my chips forward and go out and meet something I don't understand. The hell is that, an air tank? The hell are you using an air tank for? You got me. <laughs> you can look at it when you get in. I got under control. Why wouldn't you have nobody watching this man? Yo, look at this man's eyes. He's not even blinking. Oh my God. Damn, this is just the beginning of the movie. <laughs> Yo, but even though that scene was gruesome, I really liked how they shot it. The direction in that scene was fantastic, especially when they was looking down on him and they was doing like that nice little swivel or whatever you call it, man. That was nice. You know, one thing that I've heard about this film is that Javier Bardem's performance in this movie was probably one of the best performances in this Howdy. modern this day about? or Step out of ever. Arm, please, sir. Would you hold still, please, sir? Oh! This guy right here is a straight up psychopath. <laughs> it's the beginning of the movie and this man has already killed two people. Wow. And it's just like this man's whole appearance is just like frightening. <laughs> CGI right there was kind of bad. <laughs> Oh, damn, what happened to the dog? Damn, they had a freaking shootout. Looked like a drug deal went wrong. The Cohen brothers are coming out swinging with this one when it comes to the camera work. I really liked how they slowly panned up on him when he was walking and they had that nice over the shoulder shot. Man, it's some masterful directing already. Damn. Oh, so that's why the dog was running. So this has something to do with the cartel or whatever. Damn, they lit him up for him to be in that position. Oh, for real. I ain't got no water. Since you about to die, might as well take your round off of you. Appreciate oh, you, bro. Drugs. Ultima Ombre, last man standing. There must have been one. Where'd he go? Hey, Lobos. I ain't no Lobos. This man is over here having a jolly old walk. 
Man probably walked so damn far away from his car and stuff. I would have been tired. Look like it don't phase him at all. Right off the back, I can say I love the filter that they got with this film. Oh, that's a nice shot right there. I, I like that. Man, got him a whole bunch of good free weapons. That's what I'm talking about. And you got him some money. Hell yeah. Hit the jackpot. Woo! You in the middle of nowhere? You ain't got no witnesses? Hell yeah. Damn, that man is lucky. It's probably close to a meal right there. Or maybe even over a meal. How much drugs they had on that truck. I already like the subtlety with this movie too as well. There hasn't been uh, one piece of music so far. It's just been complete silence. What's in the satchel? It's full of money. Keep running that mouth of yours. I'm gonna take you in the back and screw you. <laughs> Keep it up. That's a man right there. Llewellyn? Yeah. What are you doing, baby? Well, something I forgot to do, but I'll be back. I knew this man was gaining a conscience. No. I do something dumber now, but I'm going anyways. If I don't come back, you tell mother I love her. Your mother's dead, Llewellyn. Well, then I'll tell her myself. Damn, he didn't know his mother died? The hell? Somebody came and shot this man in the head? Damn, pop this man's tires. That was just dumb for you to come back. Like, I don't know why you would come back. The man was gonna die anyway. Oh, I really like what they was doing with the camera right there. I liked how they doing this chase scene. That was nice. Damn! The That dog vicious. <laughs> this man having a chasing with a dog in the water. Ooh! Oh, that was some nice tension right there. I wonder why he took off his boots. How much? Oh, here comes this iconic four. scene. You don't get any rain up here, way? What way would that be? I seen you was from Dallas. What business is it of yours, friendo? I didn't mean nothing by it. Didn't mean nothing. Wouldn't it be something else? I don't know. Will there? Okay, right off the bat when it comes to this scene, like I really try to analyze actors when it comes to like physical movements and stuff because that's one of the hardest things to do when it comes to acting. Like just the way that he's eating the peanuts and just like how he's barely moving and he's keeping eye contact on this man, looking him straight into his soul pretty much. Like he's mind fucking him. It makes his performance just that more powerful and that more frightening and intense is something wrong with what? With anything. Is that what you're asking me? Is there something wrong with anything? Will it be anything else? You already asked me that. We close now. Now is not a time. What time do you close? Generally around dark. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? <laughs> what time do you go to bed? Sir? You're a bit deaf, aren't you? I'm like, shoot, if I had a tall, scary, pale man with a horrible haircut asking me a whole bunch of random questions I'm not used to, I'll be saying, huh, too. Like, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Shit, hey, this old man killing back? it. Be closed. You lived here all your life? This is my wife's father's place. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if that uh, impulse ago. that he did American was duck. actually real. Like, the way you he almost it. choked on I what he was eating or something. To put it. Sir, the most you ever lost on a coin toss. Call it. Call it, yes. For what? Just call it. One thing that I'm picking up with this movie is they do a lot of over-the-shoulder shots. 
and it works out pretty well. Like I, I like how they're doing it in this scene here, but I've noticed that in other scenes. I can't call it for you. Well, it wouldn't be fair. I didn't put nothing up. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. You know what date is on this coin? 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. They plan off of each other very well. I'm fully All invested right. into this scene. I've never seen the it's full it. scene, but this is amazing right here. Well done. Don't put it in your pocket. It's your lucky quarter. That had to be one of the greatest scenes I've ever seen in a movie. And I just want to make sure that I acknowledge the team effort that went into making that scene. The acting in that scene was tremendous. The writing for that scene was just amazing. And just the way it was directed, just how subtle it was, but also impactful at the same time, just speaks for itself. The cinematography throughout this movie has been gorgeous as well even the sound design in that scene was just terrific just the way it was with the rapper and how that scene was shot and just the sound effects of him chewing on the peanuts or whatever my riding bitch also is he like a hitman for the cartel then i thought he was just a straight serial killer you getting anything on this not a bleep Give me that. Oh, shit! So far, every single time too. this man has killed somebody, it just sh surprised me. Like, I didn't even know he was gonna do that. That looked like about a 77 Ford you, Wendell. It could be. I'd say it is, not a doubt in my mind. Man killed the Mars deputy, took his car, killed that man on the highway, swapped for his car, and now here it is, and he swapped again for God knows what. Well, this is just a deal gone wrong, isn't it? Yeah. This is probably the first movie I've ever seen Tommy Lee Jones in where it's like a, say like an Oscar film, pretty much. Bro, look at that yeah, shot right mess, there, man. I, I really love shots like that when you have somebody if it ain't in the foreground and somebody in the background. Man, he getting ready. comes in his house and then drinks his milk. I mean, it's fine, he ain't living there no more, so can't let it waste. This man really has barely blinked at all. You going in? Gun out and up. What about yours? I'm not buying you. He, he been through so many of these. Now that's aggravating, I'm still sweating. Oh, Sheriff, we just missed him. <laughs> hey, I like that these people ain't Looking trying to waste this milk. Here. He's got any notion of the sorts of sons of bitches that are hunting him? He's seen the same things I've seen, and it certainly made an impression on me. Bro, I'm loving the dialogue in this movie, and I, I'm I'm Take catching the there. shots that they oh, doing when it comes to like the TV. Here. All right, that's that's smart. I thought he was just gonna put it right in there, but he put it deep in there and tried to hide it as best he could. Damn, man, this man's feet is fucked up and his shoulder. <laughs> What's up with the CGI animals? Like, I understand you don't want Land them to shoot real animals or something like that, but was just, that was something I would not expect respect, from this film. Like a lot of sense. You said entry wound in the forehead, no exit wound. You tell me he shot this boy in the head and then went digging around in there with a pocket knife? You already have the tent. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Well, you give me the model number on the tent, I can order you the poles. Uh, never mind, I want a tent. <laughs> oh, they had a tracking device on the money? Oh, damn. Oh, just look how menacing this man's face is. And just the way that they get it angled there, it just makes it more terrifying. This man coincidentally found the money. Okay, so he, he must be a hitman for the cartel. He's just a real sick dude. That's probably what it is. He gets a thrill with killing. 
This man really took his shoes off so he couldn't, nobody could hear him. What type of shotgun is that? Oh snap! I really like that silencer on that shotgun. Just the sound when he fires it, it sounds so nice. How'd you find that? No, I'm not there. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice shot right there too. I like that, man. Man, got it just in time, man. You know Anton Chigur by sight? Yeah, sure. I know him every which way. What? I didn't know he was in this movie. Just how well do you know Chigur? Just how dangerous is he? Compared to what? The bubonic plague? He's bad enough you called me. Yeah, he's a psychopathic killer, but so what? I'm just playing them around. Could you validate my parking ticket? An attempted humor, I suppose. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm dead ass serious. <laughs> I ain't trying to pay that oh, fee. Yeah. So now they got a man trying to track the serial killer while the serial killer is trying to track Josh Brolin with the money. And then you get the cops trying to track Josh Brolin, get him into safety. You own all night? Yes, yeah, sir. I'll be right here at 10 o'clock in the morning. This is for you. There's someone who's been looking for me. Call me if anyone else checks in tonight. By anyone, I mean any swinging dick. Hey, if I was you, I would just put it in a different briefcase. Oh, they stuck it in the money. That's smart. Bro, there's been non-stop tension throughout this movie. So now the man don't want to answer the phone. Shoot, he probably on the toilet. <laughs> Shit, it is him. Oh, you got the trucker thing. Oh my gosh, he turned the lights. Why would you go towards the alley? Man, he would know you would go towards the alley. Damn, we got him good. Oh, yeah, you in a small town. Ain't nobody up. Damn. Don't worry, I ain't gonna hurt you. I need you to drive me on out of here. Oh, shit. Oh. Yo! Damn! I like how they doing this shot right here. Cause that's slick. I just like how they utilize that. Now that man dipped. Or he probably just went around. Just look at the lighting right here, man. One thing I always try to analyze when it comes to acting is how somebody plays off an injury. And Josh Brolin has been doing fantastic with that. Oh shit, this man is dying, yo. <laughs> man over trying to go to sleep. Y'all woke him up singing. Ah, oh, so he got him. Oh, okay. Oh no, you got to blow the car up. What? Ooh. 
Yo, that's fire. That shot right there was freaking amazing. Oh my God. Oh, damn. That man dips like that, but with that bum leg. Oh man. Ah, this movie is completely different than I thought it was gonna be. I I really thought it was gonna be kind of like a find the killer type of movie, but I actually like what they're doing right here a whole lot more. I'm guessing this isn't the future you had pictured for yourself when you first clapped eyes on that money. Don't worry, I'm not the man who's after you. I've seen him. Man, you're not dead. What's this guy supposed to be, the ultimate badass? His name's Shiger. Sugar. Shiger. How do you know he's not on his way to Odessa? Why would he go to Odessa? Damn, ain't no you about why. your wife. If I was into cutting deals, why wouldn't I just deal with this guy, Sugar? You can't make a deal with him. Even if you gave him the money back, he'd still kill you just for inconveniencing him. Man, that's crazy that he's in this small town, but, like, all these people know. <laughs> like, damn, man. She like, at the beginning of the movie, I was just like, hey, this man got this money. Nobody going to find out and all this stuff. Everybody immediately knew. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> 600 pounds of very pissed off livestock. You'll excuse the, well, Charlie grabs his gun there, shoots the damn thing in the head, but with all the swinging and the thrashing, it's a glance shot. Ricochets around, comes back, hits Charlie in the shoulder. You go see Charlie, he still can't pick up his right hand for his hat. When Llewellyn calls, just tell him I can make him safe. what I'm talking about like how did he even get that type of thought in his head that this man might have threw the money over that fence into them damn bushes man he came back to this hotel hello Carson you don't have to do this Make it worth your while. Take you to an ATM. There's 14 grand in it. Everybody just walks away. You just said this man don't accept any deal and you over trying to make a deal with him. Satchel is. If you knew you would have it with you. I could find it from the riverbank. I know where it is. And you know what's going to happen now, Carson? You go to hell. Mm -hmm. All right. If the rule you followed brought you to this, of what use was the rule? Do you have any idea? How crazy you are. I mean, yeah, he's had some you. pretty cool quotes, though. <laughs> oh, damn! I really didn't think that he was going to die like that. I thought he was going to at least put up somewhat of a fight. Carson Wells there? Not in the sense that you mean. Do you know where I'm going? Yeah, I know where you're going. <laughs> Had to make sure he ain't get right. no blood on his boots. It doesn't make any difference where she is. So what are you going up there for? You bring me the money and I let her go. Otherwise, she's accountable. The same as you. I won't tell you you can save yourself because you can't. Seems like better to have like a little epic showdown at the end of the movie or something, man. I hope Josh Brolin can walk away with this, with the money and live a happy life and stuff. Here last week, they found this couple out in California. They rent out rooms to old people, kill them, bury them in the yard, cash their social security checks. What? Well, they'd torture them first. Wow, and they just and now on, found out about that? Helpful. Neighbors were alerted when a man ran from the premises wearing only a dog collar. Oh, so they was like pegging him and stuff. I dare you to even try. Who do you think it's through this gate in the United States of America? American citizens. Who do you think decides? Well, you do, I reckon. That is correct. I don't know. I ask questions. Then Man, bro, you can hear you my accent. No you in the service? Uh, no, sir, I'm a veteran. Ma'am? Uh, yes, sir, two tours. What outfit? 12th Infantry Battalion, uh, August 7th, 1966, July 2nd, 1968. You gotta let him through off well, that one yes, question. Sir. I had the sheriff here from Terrell County. What'd you tell him? What did I know to tell him? You're hurt, ain't you? What makes you say that? I can hear it in your voice. Oh, that's a good woman right there. She know her man. I'm going to give you the money. I'm going to put you on the plane. Llewellyn, I ain't going to leave you in the lurch. No, look, this works better. With look, with, with you going and I don't have the money, you can't touch me, but I can sure touch him. 
What am I supposed to do with Mother? No, she'll be all right. She'll be all right? She'll be all right. Ain't nobody gonna bother her. <laughs> oh, man. I know that you ain't supposed to be laughing at that, but just her delivery on that was just funny. Damn, that man is savage. Came in there in the middle of a meeting and shot him in the neck. He gave the Mexicans a receiver. He felt that the more people looking... That's foolish. Are you going to shoot me? That depends. Do you see me? Going to El Paso, don't ask me why. It's not often you see a Mexican in a suit. I know it. Where are you staying? Damn, she freaking giving out too much. Sheriff, can you give me your word on something? Yes, ma'am. Llewellyn would never ask for help. He never thinks he needs any. Carla Jean, I will not harm you, man. And he needs help, whether he knows it or not. Hey, what's the problem there, neighbor? You gonna clamp him, buddy? Can you get those chicken grates out of the bed? What are you talking about? Damn, he really took this man's truck. So he just don't hang on to cars at all. You sport. Yeah, it's me. I got beers in my room. I'm waiting on my wife. That's who you keep looking out the window for. Oh, hey. Damn, you meddling, girl. What else then? I'll bring the ass chest out here. You can stay married. Well, I know what beer leads to. Bro, don't tell me you better cheat on your wife. I can't believe they really just killed this dude off camera like that. What? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. I did not think he was gonna go out like that. This movie is just surprising me a lot. It seemed like it's just a whole bunch of random stuff. You know, if you'd have told me 20 years ago, I'd see children walking the streets of our Texas towns with green hair, bones in their noses. I just flat out wouldn't have believed you. Signs and wonders. But I think once you quit hearing sir and ma'am, the rest is soon to follow. It's the dismal tide. I actually agree with that wholeheartedly. Not the one thing. It's crazy what the world has turned into. Man. Man. But I'm like really I'm loving sure the dialogue here yeah, in this movie. Uh oh, and the lock is gone. Oh, he waiting. <laughs> oh, he's trying to see if he hid it in there. Got a letter from your wife, keeping me up on the family news. Didn't know there was any. Told me you're quitting. How fresh is that coffee? I generally make a fresh pot every week. Every week? Well, all the time you spend trying to get back what's been took from you, more is going out the door. After a while, you just have to try to get a tourniquet on it. Damn, man, that's messed up. She lost her husband and her mother. I ain't got the money. I wouldn't worry about it. I need to sit down. You got no cause to hurt me. But I gave my word to your husband. That don't make sense. You gave your word to my husband to kill me? Your husband had the opportunity to save you. Instead, he used you to try to save himself. Not like that. But that's dirty, yo. You don't have to do this. People always say the same thing. I was just thinking that. Like, almost everybody he ran into, the they said that. This is the best I can do. Call it. I know exactly what was in store for me. Call it. Man, this dude looks so creepy. I ain't gonna call it. The coin don't have no say. Well, I got here the same way the coin did. That's a really nice line. I like that. This man been having some real nice quotable lines. Wow, man, I really feel sorry for that woman. She did not deserve to die, man. Damn, it was just an unfortunate set of events throughout this whole thing. 
Say, who would y'all think is more sadistic, him or Two Face? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh damn! I knew something like that was gonna happen. Damn, but that dude dead. Maybe that's just his karma. Oh my God! Are you all right? You got a bone sticking at your arm. What did you take for the shirt? Ah! You didn't see me. I was already gone. Damn. Yeah. So that probably was some karma or whatever. But he get up easy like come on man i thought it was gonna be like some training day stuff or whatever <laughs> I had dreams two of them both had my father in them it's peculiar anyway the first one i don't remember too well but the second one it was like we was both back in older times going through this pass in the mountains rode past me and kept on going never said nothing going by just rode on past and then i woke up Whoa, wait, that's the end? W what? Bro, what the heck? <laughs> Yo, I don't know what this is in my ear or whatever, but it's giving me a little bit of anxiety. Okay, now it's music, all right. All right, everybody, and that was No Country for Old Men. I'm not gonna lie to any of uh, y'all. After watching this movie and trying to reflect on it, because I I sat here for like a good 40 minutes or whatever trying to collect my thoughts on this film. So far, every Coen Brothers movie I've seen, like this movie, The Big Lebowski, it's just like I'm always lost. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I didn't know what the hell some of these parts of the movie was for. There was a lot of parts where people were just like talking and stuff, but they wasn't talking about anything that really had anything to do with the movie. So I was just like, what? I was just, I was kind of lost, man. But I think this is probably just a movie that I have to rewatch again and really pay attention to what these people are saying because it was also kind of hard to hear what people were saying because everybody in the movie was like kind of mumbling and it just made it kind of hard for me to understand what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> I do like this movie. Don't get me wrong on that. It's just like I was lost with it. This movie is completely different than I thought it was going to be. Like I told y'all, I thought it was going to be like a type of movie where Tommy Lee Jones and, and Josh Brolin, I thought they was going to be trying to go after Javier Bardem because he was a serial killer. But... The movie actually was Josh Brolin finds the money from a cartel deal that went wrong. Javier Bardem is a hitman for the cartel who was sent out there to retrieve the money. But Javier Bardem is like a real sick man to the point where he doesn't really give a damn. He would just kill somebody just to kill him, really. Then you had Tommy Lee Jones, who was just there. <laughs> but I understand not every movie has a happy ending. I, I know that. This was like a real depiction of something. Whereas the sheriff, he is trying to help this man and he's trying to find this man, but he ends up failing. You win some, you lose some. And I, I know that's kind of messed up to say when it comes to like somebody's life, but when it comes to, you know, certain crimes and stuff like that, sometimes you don't always find the missing person. And I can see how this differs from other films. And I appreciate them going that route. It's just, I was kind of lost throughout this movie. That's why I like barely talked while watching this film, because I was trying to understand what was going on. <laughs> Since this is a very slow-paced film, and it's a very dialogue-centric film, I wanted to make sure that I analyzed the performances and I got the dialogue. I would say I love the dialogue in this movie. The parts that I could understand. <laughs> the performances in this movie were outstanding. I love the directing. The Coen brothers, when it comes to their directing, is just magnificent. Javier Bardem, he killed it in this movie. I just loved his subtle approach 
to his role and just that real sadistic take he went with it. The man like barely blinked. He looked so pale. That hairstyle is kind of (laughs) creepy. He barely really did any physical movements like I was telling you. Like anytime he was sitting somewhere, he would always find a position and he would just sit. It's like he never moved around, tried to talk with his hands, none of that really. Tommy Lee Jones did pretty good in this movie. This is kind of like one of those movies like Shawshank where I just love listening to Morgan Freeman talk. This movie, I just love listening to Tommy Lee Jones talk. Josh Brolin killed it in this movie too. I'll say he probably had the more dynamic range between everybody when it comes to just all the emotions that he was displaying on screen. Everything about this film was magnificent. I love the directing and the dialogue more so than anything else in this film. You know, Woody Harrelson did really good too. I was really surprised that he was in this movie, even though he was in there for like a short while. Like, I was surprised by a lot of stuff. A lot of the deaths in this movie surprised me. Like, I kind of had some hint that Josh Brolin was probably gonna die, but I thought it was gonna be like at the end of the movie where probably he dies and Javier Bardem dies. That's what I was thinking. And probably Tommy Lee Jones was the only one to be alive and he was to retire pretty much like how he did in the movie. It didn't go that way. And when Woody Harrelson died, I didn't expect that at all. (laughs) If you look at everything about this film, everything about this film was subtle. When it comes to like the camera movements, it was real subtle, it was always slow. They never really did any fast movements. They would like linger on certain shots. They would do like nice slow pan shots or zoom in shots or push in shots, whatever you wanna call it, zoom outs or you know, stuff like that. When it comes to people's performances, this could pretty much be like somebody watching somebody's life, really. Just how realistic everything in this movie was if you think about it and then when it comes to like the soundtrack of the movie the soundtrack was real subtle they barely had any music playing at all i love the cinematography it's just this is a masterpiece of a film it's just i have to train myself to fully understand it but I just, I can't wait to hear y'all thoughts when it comes to this movie. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. You know, please like, share, comment down below, and subscribe. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links will definitely be in the description. I would give this movie right here a 9B minus. But with all that being said, I'll see y'all on the next one, all right? Peace.